let's imagine that you get some layer every month from some data source, whether that's a file geo database, a shapefile, whatever. You have to download it or you get it in an email. And then you want to compare those new features to the old features. I'm going to show you how to do that with a tool in ArcGIS Pro called the Feature Compare Tool. It's really handy, but has a real serious drawback if you're going to be using it. So let's get after it. The Feature Compare Tool is a geoprocessing tool that you can find on the geoprocessing pane. But what if I don't have a geoprocessing pane, Jeff? If you're not seeing that pane, here's how you get to it. Up on the ribbon, you need to go to the Analysis tab and then clicking the Tools button in the Geoprocessing group in that tab. Now this pane itself has a few tabs. It has Favorites, Toolboxes, and Portal. The Favorites tab has tools that you've marked as your favorite tools and then a few extras that Esri thinks that should be your favorites. I don't know how they determine those, but there they are. And then down below that, there are tools that you've used recently. You can find the feature compare tool by typing the name of the tool or keywords that describe the tool in the search box. Notice I typed in compare features, but Pro was still able to find the feature compare tool. Now here's a tip I'd recommend when searching for tools. When you've located the tool, right click the tool and select locate. This is going to show you where the tool is located within the structure of the toolboxes. And this is helpful because it shows other tools that may be similar to that one that you're searching for and you didn't know it existed. In this case, the feature compare tool is located in the data comparison group of the data management toolbox. Here we see other comparison tools that we might be able to use in other scenarios. Notice the detect feature changes tool that has a locked icon. This means I don't have the needed license to run that tool and I guess Esri wants me to know that I'm missing out on something. All right let's open this sucker up and see what we need to do. This first parameter is input base features. I've downloaded some parcels from Maricopa County in Arizona and to help things run quickly I've exported a few parcels to use for this video. Let's hit this drop down and see what kind of inputs this parameter takes. All of the layers in my contents pane are available. Notice this layer called new parcel selection. This is a layer I created by selecting some parcels in my new parcels layer right-clicking, going to selection, and choosing make layer from selected features. That's going to create an in-memory subset of the parent layer that you can symbolize as its own layer and use in geoprocessing tools like this one. So for this parameter we can use feature classes including shapefiles and layers both on disk and in memory. You could also hit the browse button to go to feature classes and even layer files stored somewhere else. We're going to use the old parcels for our base layer. So the same types of inputs are available for the test features parameter for this one, we're going to use the new parcels layer. Our next parameter is the sort field parameter. This one will use a common field or fields in both layers and sort the records based on those fields in order to be comparing the same records in each layer. If you specify multiple fields, the tool will sort the first field first, then the next, and so on. Here we're going to use the APN field. Those three parameters are all required and the rest are all optional. Next comes the compare type parameter. These options are pretty self-explanatory. They're all geometry only, attributes only, schema only, and spatial reference only. You aren't able to pick and choose, so if you want to do two, you have to do all of them. We're going to leave it as the default of all since we want to look at geometry and attributes. Up next is the ignore options parameter. You can ignore measure attributes, Z attributes, point IDs, extension properties. Then we have subtypes, relationship classes, representation classes, and field aliases. Our layers don't have any of these things, so we're going to hit this select all button. You can also hit this reset button to clear all of your selections. Now we need to specify an XY tolerance. This is going to look at the geometries of the features and is only going to mark them different if they exceed this tolerance. It defaults to just over three thousandths of a foot, which equates to just under four hundredths of an inch. That's tight, as my kids would say. We're going to bump that up to 0 .009 for the demo. You may just want to leave it the default. I'm bumping it up because I modified the test layer a little bit to trigger a difference in the comparison. I tried to modify the features to be four thousandths of a foot different, but I couldn't digitize a line that small. The next section is for N-tolerance and Z-tolerance, and I'm not sure why they're here because we're ignoring them up above. Now we have the option to specify an attribute tolerance. Again, a difference won't be triggered unless the change exceeds this tolerance. Just for fun, we're going to only care about changes of two or more in the floor field. This next parameter is in case you want the comparison to ignore any specific fields. I'm going to check the start date field and here again are the select all and reset buttons for your convenience. 
This next parameter is pretty important and I'm not sure why it isn't at the top of the tool. It's the continue comparison parameter which is a solitary checkbox under omit fields. I believe this is a bit of a design flaw, it almost looks like it's part of the list of fields. This checkbox is important because if it is left unchecked, the comparison will find the first difference and then exit the process. I believe in most cases the user would want to know what the differences are between the two comparison layers. Lastly we have the output compare file. This allows you to specify a name for a comma delimited text file. If you just enter a file name with no extension, the tool will place the file in the project folder with a .txt extension. I like to name the file with a .csv extension, which allows me to open it quickly in Excel if I need to. If you want to put the file in a specific location, you click this browse button, navigate to a folder, and then enter a file name. When done this way, there is a bit of a gotcha if you don't enter an extension. Let's call the file compare file and click save. Now we can see there's an error in that parameter. If we go to the end of the path to look at the file name, we find that the browse option tacked on a dot star on the end of the file causing the error. If we replace the dot star with a dot CSV, the error notification goes away. If you use that browse button, be sure to give the file name a dot CSV extension. Now let's chop that run button and see what we get. Hovering over the result pops up the tool status report that hopefully doesn't have any errors for you. Let's click that View Details link to get that status report in a pop-out window. Here's a little discovery I had. If you save the file as a .csv, it gives you a link to open the file right from the tool status window. There's something new that I learned while doing the research for this tool, and if it helped you out, give that like button a chop real quick. Another nugget of helpfulness is this copy status button. You can now click that and paste the text into a document that you can then send to tech support. Or you can read through it at bedtime if you're having trouble sleeping. So when I ran that tool for this video, it gave me different errors after I recorded that audio. It's because I have these four features selected. Now geoprocessing tools are going to run on things that are selected. So I had four features selected in this new parcels layer. So it compared all my old parcels to these four new parcels and it fouled everything up. So be mindful of your selection when you run geoprocessing tools because it usually runs on the selection by default. That's fouled me up so many times I wish I had a nickel for every time I've done it. Anyway, there's a little tip for you. Back to the process. Let's click on this link and open up that table and see our results. Looks like we ended up with 17 rows in this table. The columns in this results report are has error, which is a boolean stating whether there's an error or not, identifier, which tells you what is being compared, the message column tells you there's a change and with which field, base value is what was in the base layer for that feature, and test value tells you what was in the test layer for that field. This last column is the object ID for that feature in the base layer, and this field makes it possible for you to relate the results back to the actual layer. I'm going to rename this column to ID because if it stays as object ID, it makes things a little confuser later in the video. You can leave it as object ID if you want. We could add the CSV itself to our map, but in order to be able to have it work with our layer, we're going to convert it to a table in a file geodatabase. We're going to do that using the table to table tool and the reason it needs to be in a file geo database is in order to relate it back to the source layer the table needs to have an object id field or oid this is a pretty simple tool input rows output location and the output file name is all we need if we wanted to filter the rows that go into the new table we could add an expression here but we want all records in the new table Chop that run button. After it runs, the table is automatically added to the map for us. Now we're going to set up the relate to the base layer. Open up the table we just created and relate it to the base layer by exposing the data tab while the table view is active in the view or selected in the contents pane. In the relationship group, hit the relates button and choose add relate. The compare table is automatically filled in as the layer name or table view property because it was selected when we fired up the tool. We want to use this ID field here at the end of the table that we renamed earlier. We want to relate this table to the old parcels layer and use the object ID field. Let's name this relate changed features. I'll leave the cardinality as one to many and click OK. And now we have our relate set up. Now we can choose a row in this table, go to the data tab, click on related data, and choose old parcels. 
I'm not sure why it uses the name of the layer instead of the name of the relate that we just set up, but there you go. Now we see which feature was changed. By setting up that relate, it helps us find the changed features more efficiently than just going and doing individual queries for each object ID. For this demo, I just made a few modifications to these parcels that we're going to quickly go over. This first row says the field area was changed. And if we look at the values in the base value and test value fields, the values look the same. Here's where I threw a bit of a curveball. I actually added a space to the end of the test feature value so that it would trigger the change detection. A lot of times these errors end up in the data because of the typos or whatever, so you got to watch out for these. And just because they look the same to your eyes doesn't mean that they're the same in the field. This next record shows a change in the floor field from 1 to 4. Remember that we specified a change greater than 2 in this field is all we cared about. Where this field went from 1 to 4, it triggered the change. If we look at this parcel, I changed the floor value to 3, which is a change of 2, and therefore didn't trigger an error. So with this tool, it's a greater than, not a greater than or equal to comparison. Object IDs 423 and 424 are different in the shape field. I modified these parcels very slightly. I moved one vertex on 424.02 feet to the east. If we zoom in, you can see we have to zoom way in to see the change visually. For parcel 423, I tried my hardest to make a modification that wouldn't trigger the change detection, but I couldn't make an edit small enough that it wouldn't trigger the change. I could have bumped up my XY tolerance and then it wouldn't have triggered the change, but then I would have had to reshoot the whole video and I, I don't have time to do that. So. so let's just use this as proof that this tool detects the smallest of changes in geometry. These next rows are indicating that the perimeter of the polygon is different as well as the area. These changes go along with the change in geometry of the features. For feature 429, I changed the legal date field. The rest of these rows are indicating that there wasn't an error from the comparison. It checked these things and didn't find a difference, it's just wanting you to know that it looked for them. Now there's a major problem with this tool that you need to watch out for. And this may be another reason you want to leave that continue compare box unchecked. The very first thing the tool checks is the record count for each layer. If the counts are different, it's going to throw the comparison off. Remember the sort field parameter? If one of these parcels that we were comparing had been deleted, that will shift the records below it up in the table. So the tool won't be comparing the same features and you'll have a report that will have lots of errors. So this tool is worthless if you have layers that have missing features. So there you have it, a really deep dive into the feature compare tool. If you like that deep dive, check out this video of the Explore tool on ArcGIS Pro. We'll catch you later.